Well, let's get now to what traders have been doing this week. It's been a volatile one. Gemma Dow joining us now from NavTrade. Gemma, great to have you in on this Friday afternoon. What a week. That dip that we saw yesterday, were people jumping on to buy the dip? Oh, yes. Our guys just loved it. It's, it's not atypical for our guys to love a dip. They have shown a very strong preference for uh, buying any kinds of weakness on the market for many years now, right? So it was something we saw years ago, but as the market sort of ground higher up until 2020, they got a bit bored after a while and went to the sidelines. We saw cash at record levels uh, at the beginning of 2020. And then when the market fell off a cliff, they went mad and bought like crazy. And we've finally seen a bit of a return of that kind of enthusiasm. So we've had sort of top 20 trading days this week investors and traders so enthusiastic about this market uh, for the first time in sort of oh, let's say 12 months it's been pretty quiet over the last six months since reporting season there's been a real drift away uh, and certainly a real increase in cash levels people just not finding anything they're super excited about in this market there's plenty to buy they love that opportunity very very strong shift to the buys there's not much that they're trimming Interestingly enough, you had BHP up earlier and it's done well today. And we saw a lot of trimming in BHP yesterday. That was one of the few things they've been selling. Everything else has been a strong buy and there's just so much enthusiasm. There's still a lot of dry powder though. There's a heap of cash still sitting on the sidelines and we're starting to see cash come in from other sources, which means people are starting to really pay close attention to what's going on. So volumes up, Gemma, what was on the top of the list for, for buys yesterday? So if we ignore Fortescue, we sort of have to ignore Fortescue <laughs> simply because it is always that core group of tra active traders, very active. They follow it closely. They look at it overnight. Uh, and it is really limited to a small number of fairly wealthy people who have a very good idea of what they're doing with that stock. If we ignore Fortescue, because it just tends to skew the numbers dramatically, CSL was huge yesterday. You know, There'll be many, many of our investors who remember CSL at close to $350 a little over two years ago, right? So beginning of 2020, it was up around that 350 mark. It was massive buying, massive buying around 250 yesterday. That's everybody's favorite price. They got an opportunity to pick it up at that price during COVID. They got another opportunity last year and then they've had another opportunity now. CSL is just one of those stocks that people feel is too expensive, but when they get a nibble at it at a price like this, they absolutely love it so it absolutely rocketed up the numbers yesterday people were all over it very closely followed by the asx 200 etf so it was quite interesting those who didn't have a strong view what they wanted to buy just wanted to buy something and the etf was it that was where they were going and they were buying the asx rather than buying uh the nasdaq or the s p 500 they're quite keen to uh, to get a piece of this market and they'll be getting some bhp and some csl with that yeah, there you go, trying to pick the bottom, I guess. How did the financials fare? Yeah, this is really interesting. I've been saying for a while that banks are no longer as attractive to our guys. They were hugely popular you know, for a decade, let's be honest, and people who learned in the 90s and early 2000s that you buy banks and you're just going to make money, it's all good. Uh, and then they were hugely popular again during COVID. So all four of the big four banks plus Macquarie were in the top 10 during that COVID collapse period. They were so excited. And then they've really drifted away and shown very little interest. With the exception of Westpac, that disappointment uh, in their annual results was very exciting for a lot of guys. So Westpac, Westpac has been the absolute pick of the banks for our guys and very high value buying. Uh, so high average trade sizes for Westpac. Suddenly they're all back in. So the banks are very, very popular right now. It's still Westpac that's a preference. They absolutely love it. And Macquarie at $180 was super popular. Uh, we all know it was well above 200, right? Very recently. And we saw trimming above 200. A lot of people who were holding Macquarie were like, this is amazing. I've done extremely well. It's time to pull back. Uh, 180, I'm going to buy it again. It's looking good. Gemma, it seems like BNPL was the topic of 2021 when it came to, for, to traders. But now that Afterpay has, has come off the listing, are we seeing flows going to zip or has the interest fallen away? Zip's a really interesting one. It was a super highly traded stock for quite some time. And there was a very strong appetite for anything by now, pay later related. As you know, Afterpay was obviously the huge hit. 
Zip was actively traded. Afterpay was buy and hold for a lot of people. They just rode the wave and were really happy with it. Zip was traded far more actively. It was far more volatile. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of interest in it at the moment. It just does not attract people the way it did. That drift down has been so consistent. It's really sapped all the energy and enthusiasm out of uh, those last few traders who were interested in it. And, and we're just not seeing it at the moment. So there's been a bit of selling, which is interesting. And I'll see on the screen, Kogan's the same. So these were absolute darlings, as everybody knows, people love them. Kogan was such an extraordinary beneficiary of lockdowns and people having to shop online uh, and also uh, stimulus payments in Australia and so on. They've disappointed several times. Inventories are high, costs are running high. They're just not interested anymore. And it's quite fascinating. We actually saw selling yesterday. Normally when there's a 12% drop in a stock that people have previously loved, that would be a sensational buying opportunity. It was not yesterday. It was definitely time for a few of our guys to get out and move on to something else. Gemma, given the volatility that we have seen in the US, what have traders been doing on that front? Look, I'd love to say that the US, they're doing something interesting, but that is not what is happening. <laughs> the US is really, really consistent. It doesn't change very much, interestingly enough. So Australia, uh, on the ASX, they will absolutely move around depending on what they're interested in and what's happening. US, they are consistently buying Tesla. Tesla's obviously been uh, hit by down 10%, right? It's not absolutely terrible. There's plenty of stocks on the NASDAQ that are down 40 and 50%. Uh, it's still a very strong buy with our guys. It's still most consistently bought of all the stocks on there and by a substantial margin. And it's the number of trades. It's not that the trade value is that high. It's just the fact that it is consistently the number of buys every night. Come in, have a look in the morning and everybody's bought Tesla. Gemma, always great to chat with you. I hope you have a great weekend. You too.